Top 10 Worst Nintendo Games and Products That I Reviewed This Year The products part will make more sense later in this top 10 list. Every year I look back at the things I reviewed and decide which one were the best and the worst. Since I like to end the year on a positive note, I'm going to start off with my worst list. I reviewed Nintendo Switch and Wii U games. I stopped reviewing Wii U games in March, but it still counts for this list, since it was, well, this year. Don't worry though, this list isn't filled with bad Wii U games, even though there are a bunch of them. It's mostly Nintendo Switch titles. Now when it comes to this list, I always go back and rewatch the videos and reconsider consider everything. Also, not all these games are really bad, but more underwhelming or not worth the amount that they're asking. That's not to say that there aren't some stinkers on here, because believe me, there are quite a few. Just remember, this is a list of games that I didn't like this year. Also, they didn't have to come out this year, they just had to be reviewed by me this year. So with that said, number 10, ARMS. I know there's a lot of people out there that like this game. The whole thing is a strategy boxing game, sorta. But I was underwhelmed by it. There have been quite a few updates to this since my review, and that's why I put it towards the top of this list. If the game was the same as when I reviewed it, it would be down a few numbers. One of us at least played with the motion controls. I wonder who that was, because it certainly wasn't me. No, I kept asking him, like, you gonna play with motion controls? And what was your answer? I avoided it like the plague. You didn't even give it a chance. Absolutely not. I think for a fighting game, you cannot risk the chances of motion controls being wonky or gimmicky that a game of this caliber and this competitive is. I beat the game using the motion controls. You beat it on level one. It's still beating the game. No, beating the game is level four. So sorry that you could be at level four. It's not an accomplishment. That's what they want you to do. I beat the game at level one. Let me live in my happiness that I actually beat this game. <laughs> level one. Level one. Woo! Number 9. Rogue Trooper. This, like the title ARMS, is not a bad game, but not really a good one either. It's a remake of a PlayStation 2 game, and it barely looks that much different. The story wasn't that great, and overall it was just very average. You're sometimes joined by other members of your race to fight back the enemy. If certain members die, you can carve out the back of their heads and attach it to your weapons, backpack, or helmet. Why you'd want to do that other than being a monster? Well, it turns out they have chips in the back of their head that keeps their consciousness. If you get them out fast enough, you can harvest them and they can live out their existence on your body or weapon. Can you imagine a worse fate? To be like a living, thinking helmet? Just be glad there's no jockstrap attachment. Number 8. Ocean Horn. I was craving a Zelda game, and during the early parts of the Switch's lifespan, where game releases were just not as plentiful as they are now, I tried out this old mobile game that they ported to the Switch. And while it looks pretty and it feels like a Zelda type game, everything about it is just so averaged from the puzzles to the actual gameplay itself. So the story starts out with your dad going off to fight Ocean Horn. So after that, the game starts you out living on an island on top of a cliff with nothing but a tent. While this asshole who's taking care of you lives in a house. Seriously, this island has two people living on it, you and a hermit character. But the guy makes you live at the very top of a cliff and later in the game makes you jump down a well to retrieve a package he lost. Why is he throwing stuff down a well? Then when I get down there, there isn't any water in this well. The only well on this island and there's no water. How are these people surviving? Now, getting islands to choose from is also very stupid. You can't go to an island until you know it exists. Because apparently islands won't be there unless you acknowledge their existence. And that is nuts. You get letters and bottles or people making passing references to these mystery islands, then it mysteriously becomes available to go to. Like the island is listening like, oh, He knows my name. He may see me now. Number seven. 88 Heroes. I love the characters in this game. It just has a very clever concept where you have to change characters every time you die or beat a level. And all the 88 characters that you play are different. However, the level design was so dull. I get that they had to account for multiple characters, but the levels themselves were just too boring to replay. They're all like jokes. Which was fun though, they all had their own backstories, which I'm not gonna get into. They weren't really that important. They were just kind of like, ha ha ha, here's how they got their powers, let's move on. Basically a lot of homages to other characters you might know. All the Ninja Turtles showed up. I got to play as Rick Astley. And he's never gonna give you up. He just slides around and it's amazing. But he's actually not that bad. He's not that good either, he's just kind of average. I mean, about half the characters kind of just control the same, where they just have the ability to move and then attack a short distance in front of them. In a variety of different ways. Number six. One, two, switch. This glorified tech demo was way too simple to bother playing. It got old incredibly quickly. The most crazy part about this title is that they were asking $50 for this game when it should have just been a free pack-in. There are some terrible games in here, like Gorilla, where you have to pound your chest like a gorilla. So stupid. 
Then there's the sports they tried to adapt, like table tennis and baseball, that used audio cues for you to play them. And they all suck. Especially baseball. It never worked right. One of you was a pitcher, one of you was a batter. You throw the ball and you have to hit it totally blind, which is fine if you use audio cues. But it never read my motions correctly. In fact, we got to a point where we were throwing the ball and we always tell them ahead of time we're about to throw it. And we still couldn't get it to work correctly. We tested this multiple times and had the same problem each time. Maybe it was just us. We could never get it to work consistently. And of course there was milk. Whereas you milking a cow. And seriously, who looked at this and said, this is going to be a very mature game we can play at a party? Well, maybe at some parties. But overall, it was just stupid. Number five. The Wii U console. Before I started doing reviews for the Nintendo Switch, I reviewed the Wii U console itself. I took a hard look at it and I didn't like what I saw. There were hardly any quality games for the system and the games that they did have were some of the worst shovelware games ever to exist. We're gonna review the Wii U. The system itself. For the planet Earth. Meep boop. We are now looking at this thing called the Wii U. I, Which, for one, welcome our robot overlords. <laughs> First off, you think they were saying, Are you sure this was made by Nintendo and not Fisher Price? It looks like my first video game system. So let's talk about the games in the system. Wait, hold on. I want to check on something. Hang on. Were there any games for the Wii U? Whoa, there actually were. I mean, you've been reviewing them for how many years now? There weren't a lot of games for the Wii U. I went into the deep, dark abysses of the Wii U, the indie eShop. Number four, RBI Baseball. This is the most basic version of baseball you could possibly get. The ball control for the pitching was too simplistic, as were the batting controls. It's the most stripped down version of a baseball game I've ever seen. You can move around the batter's box just like normal, or to say float around the batter's box. As your feet don't move, they just kind of hover. Nice animations there, guys. They say in the instructions you can press down while you swing to swing your bat downward. But it never really worked for me as it just kind of moved my character down. All of the character designs were so simplistic. From the batter to the outfield to the ridiculous audience in the bleachers. I mean, look at the audience. This is just copy paste, copy paste, copy paste, copy paste. It's insane. They spared every expense recreating the sense of actually being at a ballpark. Number three. Maze. Hey, speaking of shovelware for the Wii U, remember those screensavers on your Windows 95 machine? What if we decided to make a game out of those, gave it terrible controls and boring gameplay? Well, Maze did both of those things. You have to hop across small platforms to get to each one. As simple as it might sound, it's not. Every single jump is a leap of faith. You really can't gauge your jumps. You can't see where you're going. You just gotta hope every single time you jump that you make it. And you have to leap 24 times, hopping for island to island before you can beat this level and if you make one mistake you're back to the beginning look here i've collected all 10 coins in this level all i have to do is make it across three jumpy platforms and i can move on to the second part of this game ah, i just made it just barely all right two to go and this is finally over here we go no number two Zombie Brigade. This is the worst Wii U game I reviewed this year. It's an endless runner with some of the most annoying sound effects and visuals I have ever seen. It's one of those games that perfectly sum up the problems with the Wii U eShop. You might have noticed there's a woman who keeps popping up. She is all over this thing. Two, three, one. As a zombie, you can turn the people that you see into zombies as well. And they kind of act like a life bar. For each zombie in your horde, you can make one mistake. Assuming that mistake isn't falling down a hole, as they'll just mimic your actions and they'll all fall down the same hole. Plus, if you do this, you'll be treated to a sound clip of the woman scolding you for every zombie who dies. Oh my god, what is he doing? 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 Number one. Troll and I, the game that broke my spirit. First off, you have to know, this is a Nintendo Switch game. This is not some PlayStation 1 game. This actually came out a few months ago. The title runs at a smooth 10 frames a second, I would assume. Everything is just too ugly to look at, and the game just stopped working at a certain point for me. I mean, you would think that someone at some point would say to the publisher, look, not every game can be ported to Nintendo Switch. And if you ever need proof of that, look at this title. Then you hear a noise and you see this cutscene, where apparently you become unfazed and you can see your future self for a few seconds. Did my character become the Flash all of a sudden? And then you find your mom. She's trapped by an easily get aroundable tree. Seriously, duck under this tree. Step over the tree. Don't just sit there like a f 
an idiot. I know this is a video game trope of something minor being an impassable feat. However, in 10 seconds from now, you apparently figure out how to get around the tree because here come those quick time events, jumping or ducking under trees. The exact thing you couldn't do a few seconds ago. It was just one tree after another. It was very dull and repetitive and the sense of geography felt wrong. It felt like I was running too much away from where I wanted to go. Also, those trees looked like someone set a blowtorch on a couple parts of it. Do trees usually burn like they have pockets of gas coming out of them? I've never been to Nova Scotia before, but according to this game, their trees are made with methane gas. Well, that's my top 10 worst Nintendo games and products that I reviewed this year. Up next is my top 10 best games that I reviewed this year. Thank you for watching, and I hope everyone has a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays.